Hi everyone, this is Ishita from SOAIS. Today in this video, I am going to explain how to use state processes in Worksoft Certify. Before go inside the procedure, just let us understand what is the state process. Basically, state processes are the pre and post condition of any selected process. Now, let us take a small scenario. Suppose we need to create one sales order in SAP. For that, we will follow the steps like first we will launch the SAP. Then we will go inside the SAP with our credentials. Then we will go to the transaction which is responsible for creating the sales order. And once the sales order is created, we will log off from SAP. So we can follow two approaches while automating through Worksoft Certify. First approach is quite simple and it is common to everyone. First approach we will follow is we will create one utility process for login to the SAP and then we will create one transaction process uh, we, which will create the sales order and once this sales order will be created then we will uh, create one another utility process for logout from the SAP and we will integrate these three processes inside one end-to-end -end process and we will just execute this end-to-end -end process but in second approach we can define one state process that means we can define one start process and end process and accept creating separate end-to-end -end process if we will just simply click on run on that particular transaction process state processes will be included along with the transaction process and certify will run first the utility login process second the create sales order transaction and third the utility log off process so let's see how it will happen from certify so for that we need to open our works of certify any version here i am using the certify version 10.0.1.845 you can use any version so this feature is available in any version second step we need to click the project tab and there we need to select your own project. Third, you need to go to the application version and there you can select the edit state process once you right click on the application version. The fifth step is you need to choose your state processes that is start process and end process and click OK. So now you are ready with the state process definition. and. Last step, you need to go to your process and which transaction you want to execute, just execute that particular transaction. So let's see step by step from certify that how it will work and how we can create the state process. So first step, we need to click the project tab. So as I have click the project tab I can see the list of projects available here here I will choose my own project that is client name once I have chosen my client name project I can go to application version tab and here I need to choose the particular application version which is used in my transaction here I am using SAP GUI 1.0 application version. So I will right click on this particular application version and I can see the edit state processes option. So I will choose this edit state process and as you can see the edit state processes window came. Now you can see the start process and here one browse button is available and in process here also one browse button is available that means this start process and end process you can choose your own utility process or any process in my case 
I want to add start process as utility SAP logon process that will be included before each and every processes in this particular application version. So start process I want to choose UTL launch SAP. So once I will select this process I will click OK. That means our start process is defined now. Next I want to choose my end process as utility SAP log of process and I will click OK. So now I am ready and I have defined my start process and end process as state processes and I will click OK. So as soon as I will click OK you can see start process name column is containing UTL underscore launch SAP and end process name column is UTL underscore SAP GUI underscore log off. Now that means these two processes have been included to our state processes. Now I need to execute my transaction process which will create the sales order. So this is my transaction process VA01 underscore create sales order. If I open this transaction process, if I go to the steps tab, you can able to see that no utility login process is included. And if I go to the end of the steps, here also you can see no utility log of process is included. At this step, if I execute this process, this process step should fail because it will not find the SAP GUI launch pad and system. So in these steps, it may fail. But since we have already defined our state processes, certify execution engine first will load the SAP GUI login process. Next, it will go to VA01. And at last, once VA01 underscore create sales order process is executed, certify execution engine will take the end process that is log of process from SAP GUI. Let us see how it work while it is running. Let us run this process. So I will click on run button and you can able to see the configuration window. Usually if we don't define our state processes, this application version already in context area will be empty. Since we have defined our application version uh, already in context area is showing SAP GUI 1.0 that is application name and version. You can able to see one checkbox is also attached with this application and version. This checkbox state will um, define certify execution engine whether to include the start process and end process along with the selected process execution. That means, suppose you want to open your SAP Launchpad manually and you want to close your SAP Launchpad manually. So in that case, you don't need to uncheck this box. In that case, you need to check this checkbox and it will notify certify, certify execution engine not to include this launch SAP and log of SAP that is start process and end process. Since in my case I want to include this start process and end process along with my selected process execution I will uncheck this checkbox. So certify execution engine by default will load the start process will execute my selected process then again it will load the end process. So let's see how the execution will go. I will click on the start button and execution window will come. So here you can see no UTL launch SAP and UTL log of SAP is included. So just I will click on run. So as I have defined the start process 
so it has launched the sap gui and it has logged into the sap gui and once it is over sap gui is getting closed now the execution is over and if you see the result you can see the utl launch sap and utl log of process is also already included now let us see the result pdf here also you can see the utl launch sap is included and it has been executed before the va01 process has executed then after this utl launch sap process it has executed the va01 and va01 process has created the cell sorter here va01 process has created the cell sorter and once va01 is completed it has executed the utl sap gui log of process so this is the state process and this is how we can use the state process from our workshop certify thank you that's all from my side